Protein, protein, protein. You all worry a lot about protein. Protein is a big topic here on social media. And it's pretty easy to see why, right? It can aid in weight management, but it also can aid in muscle retention and in creating leaner body mass. So in this video, we will ask three questions. The first question is, what is a great amount of protein that is healthy for you? And then the second question is, what are good protein sources? And then the third question, of course, is, what does it all actually mean for you? So this topic is a lot more complicated than it sounds. So let's get started. I want to begin with the recommendations here in the United States about protein intake. And there are three sources that most people use. So I want to begin with the first source, which is the recommended dietary allowance. So this is a comprehensive nutrition guideline that is released. And a key metric in the RDA, the recommended dietary allowance, is the dietary reference intake, DRI which specifies not just macronutrient intake, but nutrition intake. And it specifies, and that's really important, in absolute value. So it means in grams per kilogram of body weight, typically. And it recommends an intake of roughly 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Not per pound, per kilogram of body weight. If you do the math, that's about 0.36 grams of protein per pound of body weight. That would translate into 72 grams of protein per day, or roughly 200 grams of chicken breast and one cup of non-fat yogurt, for example, right? So... Um, and that's fine. If you're not very active, that might be enough protein for you. There's a lot of factors that impact how much protein you actually really need. That is why there's another scale that has been developed as well. And that is the acceptable macronutrient distribution range or AMDR. The AMDR expresses recommendations, not as absolute terms, but as relative terms. And they chose to express this in percentage of caloric intake. So the AMDR recommends between 10 and 35% of calories per day should come from protein. That is already higher than what the RDA recommends because we're looking at 0.47 grams of protein per pound of body weight all the way up to 1.6 grams of pound of body weight. Right? Or in other ways, we were looking at 85 grams of protein per day all the way up to 288 grams of protein, which sounds to me a lot. And you can already see there's a huge range. So thirdly, the USDA, the US Department of Agriculture and the Department of Health and Human Services develop food-based dietary guidelines that are expressed in the MyPlate guidelines, which is currently the base for most nutrition coaches and dietitians to use. They show us between 0.67 grams per pound of body weight all the way up to 0.84 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is what we are mostly promoting on our channel here. That would translate somewhere between 120 grams to 151 grams of protein per day. Their guidelines are also very specific to different age groups and different genders and different physiological states of your body which I think you should check them out. It's a pretty good read. And if you go into my description of the video, you're going to see like read of the week. And that will be this time, the MyPlate Dietary Guidelines. This brings me to my next point. What is actually your optimal level? True is that it is very personalized to you. Not everyone needs the same amount of protein. The protein you need varies on a ton of factors, including your age, your activity level, your fitness goal, your physiological level. What has been shown in many studies is that increasing the level of protein intake corresponds with an increase of lean body mass and net protein synthesis. That is important if you want to build muscle or retain muscle, or if you're generally exercising a lot, your protein intake should be higher than the RDA, right? It should be more like at 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. This is also true for elderly individuals. It has been shown that the decrease in functional capacity, especially in elderly, if you have to lie down a lot or if you're bed bound, that can be minimized with increased protein supplementations. Now, if we look at the AMDR recommendations, the percentage of calories consumed, I personally think that with some rare exceptions, eating 35 to 40% of caloric intake from protein on the long term is too much. But I, wait, let, let's do the math to give you an idea how much it actually is. Let's say you burn 2,200 calories per day, and then 35% of those calories would be coming from protein. That's 770 calories from protein. That would be roughly 200 grams of protein, given that protein has four calories per gram. So in other words, you would have to eat 645 grams of chicken breast to get those 200 grams of protein. So now I don't think that's undoable. I think there's plenty of flexible space to do that. But however, I'm pretty safe to say that this might be too much protein for your goals. Can you do this short term or can you do this for a while? Especially if you're on a weight loss journey, it might aid in your, it did aid in my weight loss journey. I had a high protein diet during my weight loss journey. But I would say a long term, it's pretty fair to say that might be too much protein. So as a takeaway, there are many reasons to increase protein intake within a sustainable range. It's an, it increases fullness on the weight loss journey. It aids in muscle synthesis 
It aids in lean body weight. It helps in phases of pregnancy and lactation, and especially in elder individuals. I would say for most people, roughly around 20 to 25 percent of caloric intake from protein, and roughly between 0.6 and 0.8 grams of protein per pounds of body weight, is a really healthy way to go. Let's talk about protein sources. So the key is not just how much protein, but also which type of protein. And everyone talks about protein, and nobody knows what it is. So I want to talk about very quick what a protein actually is. So protein is a very complex structure and it is constructed out of amino acids. Many, many amino acids chained together. Proteins are used in our body for all kinds of reactions. We all know the proteins that are used to muscle grow. We want to build muscle, right? But there are so many other reasons why we need proteins. For example, most enzymes are protein structures and enzymes are essential for all of our metabolic reaction. All proteins are constructed out of 20 amino acids. And our body can create 11 of them. So the other nine amino acids is what we call essential. And you can see the non-essential and essential amino acids here in this chart. So now the questions arise, how do we get those, you know, all of those amino acids, especially the essential amino acids? There's not one food that only provides essential and not provides any non-essential amino acids. But there are a lot of foods that provide all of the 20 amino acids that we need, right? And those are whole foods. So whole food protein sources can be distinguished in, let's say, two categories, right? The ones that are high quality, the ones that are low quality. So we're talking only whole foods and then we talk about processed foods. High quality would be any type of lean fish or white meat or seafood, right? Like, so I'm talking catfish, herring, cod, mai, mai, you know, tuna is a great source of protein or chicken breast or turkey or any other white meat. Eggs and egg whites are great protein sources. Yogurt and dairy products are great protein sources. And then of course, peas, beans, tofu, great protein sources. Even crickets and insects are extremely good protein sources. So lower quality whole food protein sources would be, for example, vegetables like broccoli, mushroom, and spinach. They all contain protein, but not a lot. And you have to eat a ton of it to get the protein that you need. They're very healthy, all right? Don't get me wrong. Another lower quality protein source would be like things like nuts or avocados or fatty fish like salmon. They're great sources of unsaturated fatty acids and that's why you should eat them but they're not great sources to get your protein because you will eat a lot of calories to get to the protein goal that you want to have and then last but not least red meats they are good protein sources but they're unfortunately also good saturated fat sources and you have to be a little bit careful with red meats so i wouldn't consume red meats on a regular basis because of the increase of saturated fats that they will provide to you so if you go into the processed or the ultra processed foods then there's a lot of lower quality protein there any processed meats is a low quality protein source. I would put things like protein powder into the lower quality protein sources too. Although whey and soy protein powder can provide all of the 20 amino acids and can certainly aid in weight loss. And I personally eat whey protein quite often. And But again, don't rely on this as your main protein source. Choose one of the higher quality protein sources as your main quality protein source. And then you can probably rely on lower quality protein sources every once in a while. So now the question becomes, what does it actually mean for you? And I want to put this into three points. First one, it is pretty clear that optimal protein intake differs from individual to individual. It depends a lot on your physical activity, your gender, your genetics, your age, your physiological state. But there seems to be more and more evidence that the recommendation by the RDA of 0.36 grams of protein per pounds of body weight, or 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight, is too low for an average active adult, right? On the other hand, the ceiling of the AMDR range, which is 35% of caloric intake from protein, which is clearly above the RDA, right, is still very, very high. Secondly, it seems that roughly 0.6 to 0.8 grams of protein is plenty of protein for your body to use without causing any higher risk of dysfunctions or diseases. And then lastly, the source of protein is really important. High quality protein sources like lean meats or eggs or beans or tofu or like seafood, those should be the main go-to protein sources for you. Before you sign off, I have a favor to ask. Please subscribe to my channel. It really goes a long way. And please consider pre-ordering my book. We are almost done with the book. There is a recipe section that we're working on, but then the book should be ready to go and ready for pre-order probably in the next couple of weeks. And I'm pretty excited about it. The book is called Eat to Lose Weight, which is a new title and it has a lot of really great information in it. And it was a lot more work to write this than I thought, but we're finally at the end and I hope I can show it to you pretty soon. With that, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't and everyone who has subscribed, thank you very much. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful and thanks for subscribing and I see you soon, I'm out.